Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on TriHackney. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 8 Pivoting, a high level overview. The methods we use to pivot tend to vary between different target operating systems. Frameworks like Metasploit can make the process easier. However, for the time being, we'll be looking at more manual techniques for pivoting. There are two main methods encompassed in this area of pen testing. So we have tunneling slash proxying, uh, which is creating a proxy type connection through a compromised machine in order to route all desired traffic into the targeted, uh, targeted network. This could potentially also be tunneled inside another protocol. So for example, SSH tunneling, which can be useful for evading basic um, intrusion detection system or IDSs or firewall. Uh, if it's just looking to see if that SSH connection is allowed, it's going to say, sure, yeah, you can just keep sending all that traffic in and it won't actually look at what that traffic is. But we can just think of this as like putting a funnel on either end. Uh, if you've ever seen some of those diagrams for wormholes that they'll put, it's a funnel and traffic goes in one end of the funnel and comes out the other end of the funnel. And we're going from our external access to the internal network in that way. And then we have port forwarding, which is creating a connection between a local port and a single port on a target via the compromise or via a compromised host. So think of it this way. If we just want access to one service or one port, which is very common, uh, this is probably one of the most common techniques I've had to use just from things running internally. Uh, it, we can do it pretty simply this way, and this can be done with SSH pretty easily. A proxy is good if we want to redirect lots of different kinds of traffic into our network, for example, with an Nmap scan or to access multiple ports on multiple different machines. Port forwarding tends to be faster and more reliable, but only allows us to have uh, to access a single port or a small range on a target device. Which style of pivoting is more suitable will depend entirely on the layout of the network. So we'll need to have, or we'll have to start with further enumeration before we decide how to proceed. It would be sensible at this point to also uh, start to draw up a layout of the network as you see it. Although in the case of this practice network, the layout is given in the box at the top of the screen. Uh, it's helpful to have a whiteboard that you're writing these things out on or just a piece of network paper as well. Uh, for the sake of reporting this and for the sake of just getting that general practice, I do recommend just grab a sheet of network or notebook paper and start drawing things out. And you can write a little bit of information and label hosts for your own understanding. Having it written down, it helps you visualize this more, and I find it to be really helpful. As a general rule, if you have multiple possible entry points, try to use a Linux slash Unix target where possible, as these, tend to be, or as these tend to be easier to pivot from. An outward facing Linux web server is absolutely ideal. Uh, you can usually run a lot more on Linux, um, and it's just easier to do this as mentioned in the task. The remaining tasks in this section will cover the following topics. Enumerating a network using native and statically compiled tools, proxy change and uh, foxy proxy, SSH port forwarding and tunneling primarily with Unix, Plink.exe, which is a Windows binary, SoCat, uh, which is Windows and Unix, Chisel, which again is both, and then SH or S Shuttle, which is currently only Unix. This is far from an exhaustive list of the tools available for pivoting, so further research is encouraged. Which type of pivoting creates a channel through which uh, information can be sent hidden inside another protocol? That is going to be tunneling. There we go. And then research. Not covered in this network, but good to know about which Metasploit framework interpreter command can be used to create a port forward. This is something that I actually cover in the Metasploit room, and I highly, highly, highly recommend checking that out. Um, if you are looking for something to do right after this video, I recommend uh, take a breather from the network and go do that Metasploit room. It is fantastic, and I'll link it in the video description below. Uh, so this is going to be the port FTW or FWD command, rather, and that'll do it. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video over task 9, but until then, happy hacking!